What's up and welcome back. I'm John Sarkman from MovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today we're going to talk about Captain America, <laughs> New World Order. I really, I'm just saying that because like, I really want to put that as the title. Because <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to click on this otherwise. This is the 20th anniversary of Catwoman. I absolutely had to do this. I was like, wait a minute, what? I've been doing anniversaries. I found Catwoman with audio description. And I was like, oh my God. I can do it. I can talk about, I can talk about Catwoman. So, uh, in case you're unaware what Catwoman is and you've lived, I don't know, in Moldovia or something. I don't even know. Like, it's just, what is Catwoman? I, I don't know. But, uh, it's, you know, pretty renowned for being a terrible film. It's one that Halle Berry actually went and accepted her Razzie for. It came out shortly after she had just won for Monster's Ball. So, uh, she, she ran in and, like, accepted her Razzie for Catwoman. Like, she knew. Like, I think she watched this movie. She was like, ah, shit. We, we, we screwed the pooch on this one. It's also got Sharon Stone. Um, was it Benjamin Bratt? Is it this, I think? Uh, yeah, and nobody cares. Like, nobody wants to be in this film. So everybody's, like, hoping their film, their name gets redacted from my review. Uh, but it, Halle Berry can't be redacted. I'm sorry. She has to be in this. Um, and the question is, in see, now we get into the point where films, when they're released, they're bad, right? And we go, oh, that that's terrible. But sometimes, as time passes, we start getting those, like, is it so bad that it's good? And films start start to get this like resurgence to them where people enjoy watching them because they're campy and they're fun to watch. I would argue that really Street Fighter has done that. Like nobody really likes that movie, but there's something about it that causes people to keep going back and being like, my God, we made this. <laughs> this is the film. <laughs> like, this is Raul Julia's final performance. Um, so... With with this film, I I look at this and I'm like, so I'm watching Catwoman and I'm watching it in the year of 2024. And the weird thing is, this isn't even the worst thing I've seen this year. I've seen films this year that I truly hate. Catwoman, I was like, this is sort of verging on, I'd put it below Madam Web, but I wouldn't put it like at the bottom. You know, like still, this... In 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 two thousand and four, maybe I don't I don't even know. I feel like there were some bad films in two thousand four. Also, maybe it was a bottom ten. Maybe it was like a bottom twenty five. But it feels like it's one of those films that's like not quite the worst film I've ever seen, but is definitely not a good movie. Um, and so I'm looking for that camp value. I'm looking for those moments where you're like, ooh, ooh, that's a good line. Ooh, that's a silly line. Oh, I love that. <laughs> And really, it's just, I don't think it is even that. I just think it's just not a good movie. I just, it, I don't think it's entertaining enough to work as a campy movie. But I also don't think it's quite literally, like, the worst, like, set, like kill it with fire. Um, like, there are other things that I definitely have, like, a visceral angry action to because I really didn't like them. And Catwoman is just something where I'm like, oh, God. Oh, that wasn't good. Madam Web. You know, it just... Not a good time in the theaters. But enough where I would also defend it and be like, well, still not the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, and a lot of that has to do with Hallie's commitment to the role, to this really sort of silly role that <laughs> this uh, she's been given. And Sharon Stone is in this villain role. For people who want a double feature, I would watch this after watching The Substance because... There's your thing, because what Sharon Stone, what they're trying to do with Sharon Stone here is sort of a, sh a shitty poor man's version of what Demi Moore does in the substance. I know people are like, blasphemy. But if you really think about what Sharon Stone and her character arc is here, it's, it's not, it's really not that far off. She's trying to maintain her beauty. She's using this thing that may have hazardous uh, so, uh, you know, side effects 
and she also makes her into the villain of the film and she has to kill people to stay beautiful so i don't know it's there's a there's a theme if you're looking for something to pair with the substance that has a, a, a I'm sure there are better movies but if you just want to have a a cheesy good time after after watching the substance uh revisit Catwoman and be like oh cool <laughs> thank you for that uh, the audio description's fine I just it, it's it actually focuses pretty well on details uh there's one scene where she does that cheesy basketball move. <laughs> And she, like, backflips off of a wall. And you're just like... I was like, I kind of remember that visually. Even though I've only seen this movie once in my lifetime. I kind of remembered that. Like, it actually sort of brought back to me that scene. And I could... I could see it happening. You know? Um, But I, I do remember the cat suit. And what I loved about the audio description here, too, is... While Halle Berry was definitely the draw, right? She's the one, she, uh, straight guys would be like, yes, hot, so hot, so hot. She, oh no, they'd be like, bruh, bruh, she's so hot, bruh, <laughs> bruh. Uh, the film is clearly, clearly the audio description is written by a female. <laughs> because every time Benjamin Bratt takes off his shirt, it's always like, his abs. <laughs> like, there's such a focus on him every time the man takes off his shirt. It's just like, oh my god. His toned, his toned chest. Like, there's such a reference. Like, I think I count at least three times that they reference his chest when he's shirtless. And I'm just, meanwhile, I think there was like one ample cleavage for Halle Berry <laughs> you know what I'm saying like she's in the suit and and it's like the first time we're introduced to the suit and it says she has ample cleavage we're done we're done describing her her attractiveness to you but oh my god this man when he takes off his shirt listen you need to know <laughs> ladies and gamin you need to know about this I'm telling you this man has got abs so um i really loved that i thought it was really kind of fun that we kept i was like man they really like he must have really worked out for this because we were really going to town on on pointing out his i mean like you said it once so i'm assuming he's still like he didn't get fat during the movie anyway uh so catwoman I don't know. Give me your thoughts on Catwoman in the comments. Uh, has it... Is it one of those films? Because everybody... I think that's different for everybody. The So Bad It's Good line is going to be different for everybody. And I know Good Bad Flicks is a great channel. And they really dive into those, you know, movies like this. I don't know, they've probably done Catwoman. I don't know. I, I've seen so many of their videos. I forget which ones they've done. But um, I feel like it's ripe if they haven't for them to do it. And to talk about, like, the, you know, is there any there there? Is there any any hilarity to be had? Is there any fun to be had here uh, in the film? And I'm sure people have had fun with this before. I'm sure the cinema sense on this is amazing. You know, I'm sure <laughs> there are certain things. But the question is, is it actually fun to, to sit through? For me, for me, it wasn't. But I could see this being something that maybe somebody else would have fun sitting through again and again and laughing at. Not with. But at, sorry, Hallie, it still is, it's still not a good movie. Um, anyway, how do I grade this? Uh, I don't even remember what I would have given Catwoman back in the day. It's 20 years. Um, so I think I came into this thinking while it was a bad movie for 2004, I didn't, I didn't have that feeling that it was the worst movie of 2004 for me personally. So I came into this thinking it might have been bottom 10 or bottom 20 or whatever, but not necessarily the bottom. And I kind of leave with that too. So for me, since I can't give Catwoman bonus points for being entertaining in a fun way, uh, like it didn't do that for me. It didn't like, it wasn't so campy where I was like, oh my God, this is brilliant. Um, 
Yeah, it just ends up getting a bad score. I'm going to give Catwoman a D. So. <sighs> Let me know if you like it, though. Let me know if it's turned into one of those. I'm so interested because I feel like it has the potential for people. And it this is one of those things that if it started popping up with, like, late-night screenings, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Like, this wouldn't surprise me if it started having fans who were rediscovering it and being like, oh, my God, this movie. Check this movie out. Oh, my God. You know? So... Maybe it will. Maybe maybe it's just not there yet. Maybe that's the 25th or 30th anniversary or something like that. But like Showgirls has had a resurgence and it has some people who now defend it and say it's a good movie. So if you would jump back in time to when that movie came out, nobody was making that argument. So um, everything has its day. And maybe Catwoman will have hers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys on the other side.